so you're a part of the 1%. But ironically, even though you've arguably given back more to the world than 99% of the population ever will, not including bankers, or else you wouldn't be a millionaire or a billionaire, the world you enrich thinks that you should be punished the most that you need to pay your fair share with their greedy progressive tax system. Where the more value you create, the more taxes you have to pay to Uncle Sam. Now obviously, we don't want to pay all those hefty taxes. After all, why would we? Sure, there are legitimate things governments need money for, but for the most part, they're just going to waste the majority of your hard-earned money anyways. Like how the government funded a near $600,000 study in 2011 in part to find out why chimps throw poop at each other. Yes, this really happened. Your money is always better off in your more nobler hands. And hey, if you're feeling charitable, you can always donate some of your wealth like many do, directly to causes you believe in where you know exactly what your money is going towards. There comes a time in every successful businessman's life where you're making so much money that you're better off learning how to rip off Uncle Sam in legitimate and not legitimate ways, theoretically of course, than actually growing your business more. And let's face it, the legitimate ways of avoiding taxes are pretty boring. So this is how the wealthy elite illegally not pay their fair share. This video was sponsored by Trends, which is probably the internet's most undiscovered knowledge hub for entrepreneurs to find the next big business idea before it explodes. Trends is a part of The Hustle, the daily business and technology email newsletter read by over a million readers every morning. You get a first look at emerging markets, you can network with over 5,000 investors, startup CEOs, and aspiring entrepreneurs just like you, and you get private exclusive access to their invaluable content library which I know you guys are going to love reading. So stop what you're doing, pause the video, and get your first two weeks of Trends for just $1 by going to trends.co slash jake right now. The link is on the screen and in the video description below. Not paying taxes is a puzzle, a game of cat and mouse between you, the would-be taxpayer, and the greedy tax collectors, the government. What you have to understand is that the entire lifeblood of the government depends on tax dollars to survive and thrive. Governments are made up of very power-hungry people that would prefer to stay in power. So if you threaten their rule by withholding their lifeblood, especially if you're a big fish, they will pull out all the guns to track you down and make sure you suffer. With prison time of up to 5 years for each count of tax evasion and fines up to $250,000 for individuals and $500,000 for corporations. The problem is that when you operate a business that is registered in the majority of modern countries like the US, you're legally required to have your name on the business in one way or another. Sure, a business can own another business, there are some states like Delaware that allow for anonymous companies, but if everything is under US jurisdiction, the IRS will eventually be able to trace it back to you if they really wanted to. The key is getting your name off of the business off of any paperwork and to make sure that even if the US really wanted to with a warrant let's say, they can never find out who actually owns the business. Because if they don't know who owns the business, well they won't know who to charge for tax evasion. The problem is that like we mentioned, if everything is under US jurisdiction, your name has to be on your business in one way or another. This is where shell companies come in. Shell companies are official companies that you can open and control but can't be traced back to you. This way you can open up a shell company, move your money through it, and since your name isn't attached to the shell company, tax collectors won't be able to charge you. Shell companies can do anything. Open up a bank account, enter into complex business transactions, buy stuff, sell stuff, etc. The problem is that there is no way in hell countries like the US would allow for full-blown shell companies to be created because why would they give you a bulletproof way to avoid paying up? Again, there are states like Delaware that allow for some anonymity, but it's not nearly as morally lenient as other places. Enter tax havens. Tax havens are usually small countries that don't really have much going for them, so they offer an extremely enticing business environment to attract foreign businesses to work with them and collect fees. There are exceptions, but when you look at the majority of tax havens around the world, this is usually the case. Take Nauru for example. Nauru is the third smallest country in the world at only 8 square miles northeast of Australia. Not really much going for it economically, but in 2001, Nauru was internationally blacklisted because nations were worried it had become a center for money laundering. There are four main qualifiers that make a country a tax haven. Number one, the country has little or no taxes. Number two, they have very convenient financial products and incentives like shell companies for foreigners, but don't allow those very same financial products to be used within the country domestically. Take Malta for example, a tiny island off the coast of Sicily. Local Malta businesses have to pay a whopping 35% tax on all profits. Yet foreign corporations only have to pay as little as 5%. The number 3 thing that makes a country a tax haven is that the financial activities of the country lack transparency. 
And lastly, and most importantly, the country doesn't cooperate with other countries to give away their clients' identities. Preferably, not revealing client information to authorities is required by law. Along with these four main points, little or no taxes, great financial products for foreigners, little or no transparency, and no cooperation with authorities, you also want to be absolutely sure your tax haven also has these things. The country needs to have a stable economy and political climate. Shifting power can lead to someone taking over that isn't so lenient with foreign businesses and might even seize your assets, like how this happened in Cuba with the mafia. And the economy has to be entrenched and dependent on their financial industry. The more a tax haven depends on this financial sector, the more the economy depends on dirty money, the less likely they'll ever be to change their tax haven reputation and will even actively encourage it. Although this isn't 100% guaranteed that the country will never get stricter as we'll cover later, it does help mitigate your risk. The best tax havens have locals that accept some level of corruption in order to keep the money flowing. Or in other words, tax havens need to have a symbiotic relationship with reluctant foreign taxpayers. The country gets to collect fees, employ their people, and in return, the foreign companies get a haven and protection from the state itself. There needs to be a strong incentive for them not to screw you over. Some of the biggest tax havens right now include the island of Jersey between France and the UK, the island of Bermuda in the Atlantic, the Cayman Islands with the biggest one being the British Virgin Islands, where their economy holds more than 5,000 times the value of what an economy its size should hold. Once you have a tax haven in mind, it's time to start your shell company. Here's how opening up a shell company usually works. First, you're gonna choose a company in that tax haven that offers these financial services for sale. Although you can buy shell companies online, if you're a very well-off individual, you're probably gonna want to have your lawyer, accountant, or banker be the intermediary that deals with these companies to make sure everything is on the up and up. You can either buy a brand new shell company or they'll have existing ones that have a history of transactions already to make it look more legitimate, which costs extra. Once you purchase a shell company, now you have some decisions to make. Who is gonna be the shareholder of the company? Even though your name can't be legally released in many tax havens if you choose yourself as a shareholder, would you want to risk having your name on company papers? For the extra paranoid, some havens like the British Virgin Islands and Panama let companies offer bearer shares. These are nameless stock certificates where whoever physically possesses the pieces of paper owns the company. This means the firm issuing the stocks can't track the owner, and transferring ownership for a company is as simple as handing the pieces of paper to someone else. No paper trail. Once you determine the shareholder of the company, now it's time to choose the directors. Although tax havens don't require the owners of a company to be publicly listed, they do require directors of a company to. Not to worry though, because these financial firms offer what's known as nominee directors cheap employees of the financial firm that only control your company on paper, while you retain all your power via a secret power of attorney agreement. These pencil pushers sign documents for you, will hold meetings on paper, open up bank accounts for you, etc. And these financial firms will even have these directors pre-sign legal templates that can be used for future clients that come in. Some of these employees are directors on 100 plus shell companies. Once you have directors, now it's time to open up a bank account under your new anonymous shell company. Offshore companies are worthless without a bank account because bank accounts are required to do any significant transaction. So this is a pretty important step. I'd like to open a bank account. Oh, bless you. I'll be right back. And now your new shell company is pretty much good to go. What's great is that since these financial firms are really just registering paperwork with the local government, they're in a very competitive low margin business, which means all your needs are pretty affordable. With some estimates putting in around $1,500 to $4,000 to open up a shell company in the British Virgin Islands. Depending on how special your needs are, expect to pay a little more. Now it's time to put your tax haven to work. Remember, our goal is to not pay taxes. So the first step is to move our money offshore into our shell so it can't be taxed. There are an endless amount of options here. To get an idea, common methods include routing transactions to tax havens and skimming money off the top into your offshore accounts, creating fake invoices to pay your shell company for services that never happened, selling assets to your shell company at a big loss, and the list goes on. And as with any less than legal activity, the more creative you are with it, the more unexpected your strategy, the less likely you are to get caught. If you do what everyone else does, you're gonna get caught with everyone else. More on this later. Then you have to eventually get that money back home, because after all, cash is useless offshore. One clever way to go about this is the fact that you don't have to own something to enjoy it. Maybe you bought a giant yacht with your shell company. You could lease it back to yourself at a very fair price. 
Another way tax bypassers got around this back in the day is via credit cards that these offshore banks offered, where you could anonymously use that credit card back home to draw down your offshore account balance. Until they started cracking down on this since all the transactions are routed through US servers. And you have to do all of this while making sure that it doesn't look like you're secretly controlling your offshore company and that your intent looks legitimate. Absolutely not that you really were paying for a service that this faraway company offered. And that yeah, this company also offered to lease me a yacht at a very reasonable price. If meddling authorities sniff any potential wrongdoing, these are the things they're gonna look at. How you entered the offshore world, how you got your money offshore, and how you got it back to shore. And boom, once you pick a tax haven, open up a shell company with a local financial firm and get your operation going, you are now paying a glorious 0% tax on all the money you managed to get through your offshore shell companies. The bigger you scale up, the bigger portion of your profits can avoid going into Uncle Sam's coffers. But just because they might not be able to legally release your name and just because tax evasion will never go away, doesn't mean tax havens are foolproof. Remember, we're messing with the lifeblood of world governments. And when you push someone into a corner, they're gonna play every trick in the book to defeat you. In 2015, the EU released a list of blacklisted tax havens. Blacklisted countries face sanctions and they also had a gray list of countries that will go on the blacklist if they don't make tax reforms. In 2019, the Cayman Islands promised it will release the names of everyone who owns a company there by 2023. This was due to pressure from the UK and the EU. And it doesn't have to be governments that ruined the party either. In 2016, a whistleblower leaked documents that exposed more than 200,000 offshore companies and their owners' names to journalists from one firm called Mozak Fonseca in Panama. The names included the King of Saudi Arabia, former presidents of Argentina, Ukraine, Ecuador, former prime ministers of Iceland, Italy, Georgia, Iraq, Pakistan, Australia, and countless of other smaller government officials from practically every major country, and tons and tons of prominent celebrities and business people. So what I'm trying to say is you shouldn't evade taxes because it's bad. <laughs> I mean, just stay safe, stay creative, don't penny pinch in this arena, and for the love of God, make sure you cover up your tracks. Theoretically, of course. So in summary, this is all pretty simple. Step number one, make money. Step number two, use shell companies and tax havens to rip off Uncle Sam. Do I even have to say theoretically? But none of this convoluted stuff even matters if you don't get past step number one, how to start making money in business. One of the most common questions we get on this channel. If you look at any industry, whether it be YouTubers or big tech companies, usually the most successful ones in that space that make the majority of the money are the ones that jumped on new trends early on. You don't have to be exactly first in an industry, but being the best early on when things aren't saturated makes life a whole lot easier. So if you want to get to the point where you're making an astronomical amount of money that's worth evading taxes for, what you need is the next big trend, the next big thing. This is where trends come in. One of the best little known knowledge hubs for entrepreneurs like you to find your next business idea, network, learn, and maybe even discover the next big thing. My favorite feature of trends are their signals. Detailed yet easy to digest articles that analyzes what do you know, the next big trends. Like this signal on how to capitalize on the new billion dollar open banking industry. Or this signal on exactly what startups got funded in July. Or this really cool signal on the growing trends of peer-to-peer -peer learning, drop servicing, and bamboo plants? for ways to capitalize off of this pandemic. You're also able to easily network with over 5,000 entrepreneurs, investors, startup CEOs, and hustlers just like you. And they also have some really impressive articles on Q&As with big entrepreneurs, practical how-to guides, analyzing different industries like this one called the rent everything industry. As Americans ditch ownership, just around 300 startups exist in the rental goods space. And I've been genuinely impressed with how unique the business insights you get with Trends is. So stop what you're doing right now and get your first two weeks of Trends for just $1 by going to trends.co slash jake right now. The link is on the screen and in the video description below. And start working towards making that tax evasion worthy money while also supporting the brands that help make this channel possible. Welcome to the Watch the End Club. As you can see, we're still not at the studio yet because I still haven't gotten around to it. So we are here. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you Click the subscribe button and the like button and all that other stuff down below for more video essays just like this one every single week. You can follow me on Instagram for like memes and behind the scenes kind of stuff, kind of like this stuff. So if you want to join us over there, it's at jaketrend.io. This video was based on the book Secrecy World, which was turned into the movie on Netflix called The Laundromat. Extremely funny movie if you haven't seen it already. Highly re recommend it and the book if you want to learn more. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome. I've been Jake. Stay dangerous and I'll see you guys in the next one.